your resident certified sex coach. This is D O Y O U K N K Y, which stands for Do You Know the New Kid You? And by now, I'm sure you recognize the three of us as the host and very subject matter expert cannabis guests on our sex and cannabis series. We are now on part three, where we are continuing our conversation on coming with cannabis. So we split this one up because it's just so much to talk about. And now we're going to give you some tangibles. But before we do that, I want to introduce Lisa, who will tell you a little bit more about the person. What's up, everybody? It's your favorite home girl, Lisa. You guys are tuned into another wonderful Weed Wednesday episode with my wonderful co-host, Shanae. We are talking about sex and cannabis. We are digging deep. We are in that juicy stuff right now. And we're getting all moist with you. I'm moist. <laughs> <laughs> and we couldn't get this way without <laughs> our wonderful guest, Miss Sita. Yes, yes. Thanks for having me, guys. I am a cannabis education expert, cannabis chef. Um, I'm currently working in a vertically integrated cannabis facility where we grow, process, and make apples in the same. Cheers, all the wonderful dynamic ladies we have Absolutely. here. Absolutely. And oh, and shout out to Canneration, a yes. homegrown creation. Yes. This is all about homegrown right here, using real live leaves mm -hmm. to decorate functional home you decor. Sit after the, after the oh, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> sit. You can't sit there. Come on out. Yeah, let's sit back to the cheers. We're um, drinking out some amazing glassware, and that is a uh, Wonderful coffee love for you. Um, make sure you go ahead and check them out at canneration.com, C A N N A R A T I O N dot com, and also canneration's with an S on Instagram. Yes. Shout out to them and shout out to our amazing sponsor for the house. Yes. 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 We're sure they sex work. Can we call it? Yeah. Is that sex work? Or was that That's a sex That's work. Work. I'm sex work. Oh, and Mercury. Is it kinky? Because you say can and but can we say kinky? You can say kinky. Okay. I, 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 when I wrote it, I wrote it like a license plate. So if you say right. kinky, uh -huh. I wouldn't have a problem with it. But if you say kinky, and people, they'll type it in with the I. Uh -huh. So, you know, I try to just be mindful of saying K and KY so you know that there's no. Because I couldn't, unfortunately, it wouldn't let me patent or trademark kinky. Of course, K I N K Y wouldn't let me do that. I could do. They wouldn't let you. They or wore, no. It wasn't already taken. No, it was too broad of a uh, of a term. Yeah. That you know, it wasn't something that I could you own, could take, yeah, right. You know, that makes sense. so but K and K Y, especially with this little sexy lady, that's on me. So that's the trademark. And this <laughs> house should be trademarked because it is a, such a treasure to be here with a wonderful environment. Thank you so much. Letting us record yes. this amazing four part sex and cannabis series yes. in your wonderful home. Oh, thank, thank you. Now, let's get back to coming with cannabis because I'm sure the people were excited last time we caught up the cop up on a lot of real great ways to introduce it into the bedroom. Yes, now it's here. We done, we done consumed in whatever way possible. We we're feeling a little. We're feeling it. We're feeling ourselves. We're feeling, we're feeling, we're feeling, we're feeling, we're feeling ourselves. You know. So, what I wanted to do to concentrate on this particular episode was to think about sex and cannabis in a sensory play type of environment. Because what cannabis can do, you know, as a precursor as you know and being incorporated into you know foreplay or preplay is to help create a body high which will develop those you know physical receptors which makes touch just a little softer just a little bit more tingly, 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 tingly. and then it also you know will get into your head so it helps like we've talked about before to release those anxiety and those stresses but also lower your inhibition so when you're high, you, you lower and you're able to get out of your head and you're less worried about, you know, the silly shit in your life. 
And so you're able to have just a little bit more fun. You know, but one of the things that I wanted to, you know, start with is because, you know, we're here because your cannabis comes from somewhere. And I think just like, you know, you have good food, you can tell when your cannabis is grown with love. And, you know, I think that's what the, the home growers do. You know, they, they, they're not the mass market, you know, cannabis industry. They, you know, are the people that cultivate, you know, with their hands in the, in the soil and, you know, try to they make get it dirty. dirty. They get dirty. We mm -hmm. get dirty over yes. <laughs> you know? So I'm going to ask, like, how does this start? Like, how does the, how, how does intimacy start when you are a, a grower of the cannabis? Um, well, you know, and I'm, I'm glad that you, that we were actually going down this path because I've never really looked at it that way, um, but I've experienced it so I can speak on it. Okay. Um, the, and I've broken it down to like three different ways, right? So you have like insects, you have, or, um, uh, not for play, um, uh, masturbation, self-pleasure, yes. So um, growing can be a way of self-care, self-pleasure, and it can be a very therapeutic experience. Um, take, because you have to kind of take time out of your day to attend to your plants, um, to feed them, water them, you know, like you know, you know how that goes. Um, so when you do that, I feel like if you take, if, if you're, if you're taking that time out to nurture and take care of your plants and it helps you improve your thinking functions, you know, because you're in a, in, a, in a more of a meditative state, focusing on your plants when you're doing your work with them. Um, and you find your growth spot. You know, when you grow in, it's a learning process. So you're never going to stop learning in the growing thing. You're always going to be coming out with new technology and different ways to help you um, improve your grow or making it, it more seamless. Um, so with that, finding your growth spot and finding really what works for you. What, what, what gets you off? Yeah. So, like, what gets me off in the growing process is when the plant first starts to flower, the first two weeks of flower. The white pistol, the pistols just start sticking so right out of the plant, and it is the most gorgeous thing ever. So, when I grow, I grow for that. When I get to that, I see I'm the like, sparkling right. eyes. It's, it's I'm gorgeous. Like, you wow. don't see the sparkling way I see the sparkle. <laughs> and it sticks to, and it sticks everywhere because like you have to defend them um, in like three or four stages, mm -hmm. correct? During the growth process, mm -hmm. and so that first stage is the pistol stage where you get the real thick white hairs that she's speaking about, and it, <laughs> as you're going through the plant, like all of that trichomes have been sticking onto you. So like, is it's it really is it plant food? My family. And, 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 you know what? And, I, and I thought of that at one point. And I was touching it. And I was like, well, if this is a food. <laughs> and I'm touching her. And I'm touching her. And I'm touching her. And I'm touching her. And then, you know, talking about the male and the female, you know, plant, the different plants. And, yes. you know, yes. and, you know, a lot of, uh, you'll hear this a lot when people say, oh, if you have a male in your world, go over there. No, don't treat the men like that. Oh. Um, however, if you're looking to achieve female-only plants, yes, you do want to remove that from your space. But there's so many uses for the male plant um, because they produce the pollen. And then when you get that pollen, mixing it with the female, and that's usually how people um, cross into the strains, cross into genetics, and they're making different, they're creating the different strains. And that's where we're talking about that potion. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 So when you have those males, that male with those terpene mm -hmm. profiles and that female with those other terpene profiles, mm -hmm. and you put those together, together and then you grow them in the right the environment. Yeah. <laughs> See, I was at the moment I was waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> so that is another, you know, a way that other people that like to, um, uh, uh, cultivate and they like to make their own genetics like they're when they achieve that like that's like the high that they're trying to go for or that um that pleasurable moment when you're going with your partner you know um growing again like i said it's a rolling learning process like you're always learning something new so growing with your partner um if some people like to be like intellectual like to learn a lot of things i like to read with their partner 
So some, like that is really, really that intimate part where it has nothing to do with the physical aspect of it. It's just stimulating your brain. Um, learning uh, with them and also, you know, experimenting with them, trying new things, just like you would try new things, hopefully, yes. if you're open to experimenting with your partner in the bedroom. Yes. Um, you would try different things. You want to try different growth practices and see how that can work. So then you and your partner can find your growth spot. Isn't it practice makes perfect? Yeah, definitely practice makes yes. perfect. Absolutely. So the more you grow with your partner, the, the, the better, hopefully, that you'll get. Uh -huh. Um and then also helpfully with communication and just finding your rhythm in the growth space because your plants feed off of your energy. So if you're in a not so great environment, toxic environment, right. your plants yep. will feel, feel it, it and uh -huh. they will show it. It all translates. And them plants don't lie. Uh -huh. They no. do not lie. Uh -huh. So if you guys are struggling here around your farm with somebody, check your relationship first. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that yeah. may be the issue. You know what? That's a good thing. That's practical. You yeah. Know? If, if you're a grower, check your plans. If your plans ain't healthy, you might want to check your relationship. If any, if any of y'all is spiritual, as above, so below, everything manifests. So if that's what's manifesting, check it. Look in the mirror or look at each other. And one more way <laughs> that I, I would um, incorporate growing into an intimacy experience would be um, group growing. So I did a, a group growing <laughs> class before. <laughs> and, and, you know, group sexual experiences can happen in groups. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's that, again, that non-intimate thing where you're kind of doing more self-work. Um, this is, it, I open up my space and I invited strangers in, you know, where we both share this common interest mm -hmm. in growing. So I got to, you know, I get to, I, I crossed that boundary for myself, you know, and, and entered into a different space and also, you know, got to know new people. And we, you know, hope we are still in communication today and, we, you know, hopefully working and building uh, things together in the future. But, you know, that, without that ability to grow, we, that I don't feel as if I would have ever, you know, had those, have that experience. Do you know that everything you just said, like I could replace the word sex and it could mean exactly the same. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, I'm listening to you and I'm like, I'm going to do this back and I'm going to have you say sex and every time the book is going to say the same experience. Like people, they, their growth and their, their, the way that they experience things and the way they have to, it's, it's, it's trial and error. It is patience. It is communication. It is, you know, being on the same, you know, not on the same mindset where you have to think alike, but being on the same, you know, path and being right. able to, you know, when you come to a divergence, being able to discuss those things and, you know, figure out the right path. That, you know, so there are a lot of ways that, you know, sex and cannabis, you know, just, you know, marry each other. And so when we're talking about this and the, the sensory play of it, I think, you know, I don't think you talk a lot about it, but like just the, the cultivation, it's a hands-on process, yeah. right? Yeah. It's very, it's very, it's very because we know that the, the plants lubricate themselves. Yeah. Well. <laughs> so there's, there's, they, there is a physiological response from the plant when it's, you know, being, you know, comes up a certain kind of way. Well, right? it's, it's already there. It's okay. not like it's not like we're reducing it in the touch. That's funny. It's not the fact that we, we, we actually are. We are. When you're rubbing up against the plant and it's getting on you, it's, it is it is releasing in a way on you. Ooh. It's almost like it's fragrance. It's, it's releasing. Because the way I'm thinking about it is that it's already like the, 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 the gooeyness is already there. <laughs> We're just. <laughs> right, but if you also look at the. Um, uh, I forgot what they were called, but. Uh, the things that that trichomes, the yeah, the trichomes that hold it. Yes, it's not in a runny form. So no. like if it was runny, then I would understand. And it's not necessarily sappy where it's like drooping and drips either. No, it is a solid thing, and it does not do that exactly. unless you touch it. And that's why it's I'm not saying, going to get on you unless you physically touch the right. plant. It's not like it ain't jumping off out. Yeah. Uh, it's not dripping. It's not dripping. Yeah, right, 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 right. No, right. You have to stimulate it. Exactly. 
exactly. Okay, exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's what we're getting at. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we make our correlations. Imagine going to the first guys. Education first. Yeah. This is proof how educated we are in these See, areas. We're talking about giving you real, real. real. So, okay. so, okay, so we got that sensory thing, the plants are being touched, we, we got that, you know, gooeyness happening, that was her word, not mine, she said gooey, you said gooey, gooey, I heard gooey, I heard like, all right. So, <laughs> you know, one of the other things about cannabis is just like this, like, it can make things silly, and it can be fun, it can be lighthearted, right? Mm-hmm. And so, what do you think about you know, can you guys give me any feedback, you know, story or personal, like, how you use cannabis to put fun into, you know, just a, a, a intimate or a sexual situation? Were, were you ever just silly? Were you just let go? What, I'm sorry, you're saying how you... Just be silly. So, for instance, um, when I am, like, chilling or, you know, partaking and I'm watching a uh, stand up comedy, right? I will be laughing and if I'm with, you know, of my friend and you know, we'll be chilling and laughing and we'll get to laughing together. It makes me want to cuddle up a little bit more. It makes me want to, you know, laugh and be silly and maybe poke and play. You know, just you know be more engaging in a silly manner where it's not always so rubby rubby, touchy touchy, you know, sensuous type of initiation into a, a Oh, encounter. fun initiation. Fun initiation. Best. Yes, that's what I mean. Fun initiation. They are the best initiations. When you laugh into the shit, yes, like that shit is the best shit. Or you laugh during it, like literally, like yeah. belly, like belly ache, ha ha. Really, y'all ever did that? Yes. No, that shit is amazing. So I, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't just me because you know people. It's, it's not, not okay. Because you know there are moments where when you can be just so silly and just free and carefree, that's really when you stop giving a shit about, you know, what somebody else is thinking and what's going on and stuff. You know, I, I think you can use the effect of laughter from when you are smoking or consuming cannabis as a way to um, create that more silly sex. You know, mm-hmm. just, and it kind of goes into like the role play. Yes, because I was about to be like, like role play. Well, you know, he'll be like, bend over and roll this J, you know. <laughs> Hey, there's a challenge you for you. Yes. So is that have, have we taken? Have we? I like that. I like that. I like that. And yes, I accept. <laughs> <laughs> the judge approves. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but you know, this is where you can try to what is it cosplay or you know you can dress up and even your lingerie might like, make you want to do a stripper tease dance together. Right. You, know, you know, it's when you are. I don't know. It's, it's something a little bit more free when you allow uh, ex- laughter to to, mm-hmm. to to enter or be a part of your your sex life. Yes. And, you know. Yes. What about games? You know, as far as like sensory games, have you ever done anything where you'll do you know light maybe BDSM or some blindfolds and, and feathers? I don't to, think I've ever played games. No, no. I'm sad to have to have to admit to that. I've had great sex though. Never I got tied to the bed, but I fell asleep. I had, damn, sis! No, I've never been tied. I'm no. trying to get tied in my life. I had that indica. You had the indica. I mean, that's <laughs> how much the you had. had, 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 had the indica. And I was one one side of two hours with that. Nah, I don't get that. Oh, please. Oh, damn. Not nothing was happening. You went to the bathroom and I did it. It was that quick. That was the end of like it was, I was like a child, like you left me on the table. Gone. Yes, there are some down. I just can't move it. Right. Might as well go right. Exactly. <laughs> no, I understand. There's nothing else to do with that. No, there can be some downfalls to. to <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. You can try again. When you had a Hybrid. Yeah. You know, no, we gotta get you a hybrid. All right, so we, we have some tied up games we need to play and some, yes. some all kinds of things. Uh, you know, us. No, no, I was just saying with that, the, we did play a game. It was a card game. Oh, Derek Jackson's card game. Derek Jackson got a card game? Derek got a card game. Is it good? Yeah, it's actually not bad. So it's a card game, but it's supposed to be for like a dating card game. So like it's, it's right. about icebreaker. 
has to start to spark a conversation between you guys and also get to know you or, or know the judgment of okay. how this person thinks or okay. get a better understanding. So, you know, that's something that, that we play because some of the things that they do ask you to do on there are silly or some of the questions are kind of like out of this world. So it's a good it's a good game to play with the group too. Yeah. Or like, you know, one on one. I play, I play, there's a game called Cuff Cards that I bought before. It's supposed to be Probably like the same very similar, thing. yeah. Where you walk them out there like that. You know, but it can be good because, you know, sometimes you want to have some organic, you know, thought behind it. You know, just ask a random question. And you, and you get to kind of feel how people really respond, especially when you catch them off guard. So, you know, I, I, be, be prepared when you play those types of games. Right. To, to, to get the, yeah. You might, might not always get like the answers. answers. Yeah. You might not always like the answers you get. But you know, games are intended to be fun. So, you know, um, sensory play. What about massages? Um, massages are great. Massages are great because majority of the people have back pain. Mm. Um, so that's really a way to kill two birds with one stone, literally. Right. <laughs> You can get them um, worked up and worked out. <laughs> <laughs> She's kind of all right. Catch phrases that work up, work up, and out. Exactly. All in the same motion. You see? There you yeah. go. Um, using 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 your uh, your infused cannabis balm yes. or, or oil. Yes. And you know, with the, the magic hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the magic hand motion. Absolutely. I tell you. Yes, especially because you know when you can get rid of that pain, you know it can it can really just it intensify your your the pain up exactly. Or you, 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 you are relaxed and you know and you titillate the, the the body parts because mm -hmm. again we're talking about sensory play because yes. we are assuming that you have partook in, in some type of cannabinoid where it's either smoked or eaten or in, you know maybe licked on you or something like that and you know these are ways that you can utilize. Lowered inhibition and the enhanced physical receptors. So, getting a sensual massage that also helps to reduce pain is, is a great way to, to participate in that. Now, I know the answer to this question, but I wonder if you've done any additional research since the last time we talked about it. Um, any thoughts on sloshing? Um, I've not done any additional research, but it can get really fun. So, let's are watching again when we're when we smash food on each other. Yeah, it's a it's a sensory. It's a fetish. So you get, yeah, you'll get like cake and like ice cream, like ice cream, ice, yeah, peanut butter, chunky peanut butter, and chocolate sauce and caramel and, and eggs. Do you I have, have sex? Oh, well, say. Do you have sex? It's 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 not, not during, but you you like it's, it's a, like a full play. Yeah, yeah. A, so you'll put it in certain places. places. And wash and then get well, back you in the want bed. to do it at a place where you know, and when I'm at eggs, they do hard, like you can do like hard little eggs. Right? <laughs> 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 you can take it. Okay, well, you know, only sweet things, only oh, sweet oh, things. Things. like they've done soda, like they can take a soda. Like, I don't want soda. <laughs> no, no, you can stick it. But do you splash and then go wash? Yes, again, yes. Squash no, and wash. Then, you splash and you splash and wash and then sex in the shower. So it doesn't take that long to like mess off and so Yeah, that's real. So yeah, Google Splash. So do you deal with that? 
in your deal practice? With it, let's deal with it. Um, not deal with it, but um, do you encounter you come people, people that, that are interested in that, and do you help them like with that experience to be able to enjoy it, or you know, help another partner do you know experience it with them for the first time? Okay, we can take the a quick uh, detour, but most people have some type of thing that they're into. Squashing is just, you know, a thing. Right. You know, so ideally, only people that come to somebody for coaching or help or coaching is because they think they need help. And it depends on where that help that they're needing is coming from. You know, do they feel bad about it and they want to do something to stop it? Or do they feel some shame about it? and they want to feel normal, you know, quote unquote normal, um, you know, and a lot of it is just really figuring out, you know, the back end as to, you know, why is this causing distress for them, you know, and what they want to, what their end goal is. So at the end of the day, the people that actually do this, they have fun. It's fun. It's like, this is the high school students fight, mm-hmm. you know, where you're just all out wild and you're just throwing spaghetti and you're just throwing all kinds of shit. And it's like, and all of this, all of this is really just meant to be that. It is how can we use cannabis and sex to have fun again? You right. know, whether it's you know laughter or uh, splashing or massage. Massage just can be fun. It can be sexual. It can fucking feel good. Let's you know, let's use the advantages that we feel you know from the cannabis to enjoy and extend that moment. Make something different. You know, and be together. Be intimate. Be connected. You know, so that's what I took from, you know, if I'm going to sit and be high, people get high for a reason. You know, otherwise, why do it? You know, you can do it to to elevate. You do it to, you know, get out of here. You do it for whatever your personal reason is. But, you know, you have sex for those same personal reasons. And when they come together, you know, let's figure out the way to make them both just, right? Exactly. exactly. That's exactly what Sometimes we're doing. Words just that's, don't the, do that's the sound that it should make. If it's not making that sound, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. I don't know either. So that's it for me. That's it. Okay, well, I will chime in with uh, the best terpenes okay. um, for sex and time, especially since we're talking about sensory play. Yeah. So, um, terpenes that will help you get more into your body, get more into what it feels like and less about what it looks like. Yes. Or how you're doing it. Yes. Um, is Mercy and Lingle. These are going to get you real relaxed into your body. Mm-hmm. So Mercy, a lot of people may be familiar with um, Mercy because Mercy is found in mangoes. You may have heard eat mangoes 30 minutes before you smoke and you'll have a more intense experience. Mm-hmm. And many have vouched for this to be true. There are some naysayers. Everybody's different physiology really matters. Um, needless to say, uh, you know, terpenes really play a part in your sexual experience in the degree to which you feel things. And um, especially for those who are in chronic pain, being able to flip those receptors in the other direction into pleasure is like pain that like really is like quite the game changer. Really, quite make like all the difference in your experience. So, lean wool is also found in lavender. So, if there's anybody who's looking for non cannabis ways to in, um, incorporate this, you can also use lavender essential oils diluted with your favorite um, carrot oil. I like to use grapeseed oil, so a lot of people like to use coconut oil. Um, but just using that as a massage oil and getting that into your senses as a way to relax so that you can really. But it's in the to process me. of how those senses are released, or like. Uh, so the way terpenes work is terpenes. Um, the way terpenes work with the body is they have to be inhaled. Mm-hmm. That's why aromatherapy is so effective. Uh, okay. Aromatherapy. Um, um, your spices. Your spice cabinet is full of terpenes. That's why, you know. When you eat certain things, you might find you feel a certain way. That's why you're more prone to eat tacos during the summer. It's the terpenes that are within them that make you feel a certain way. You see what I'm saying? Like the lime, you know, you use lime with the taco, all of that, you know, it 
dictates a certain feeling. That's why you're using margaritas and um, pina coladas. It's these notes that associate you with certain things. So when it comes to especially those who suffer with pain and anxiety, when it comes to really getting out of your head and getting more into your body, immersing you in is a really great feeling. And carry off lands also get some bits in there because that's anti-inflammation. So if you are dealing with any pain, and anti-inflammation and anti-stress, a lot of these terpenes really, whatever you're dealing with, it'll really, whatever it is, it'll it'll get it. And it's the same thing with some of the essential oils that you were saying. The, yes, or, or the and that's why all the therapy right. is effective right. because it's the inhalation. Right. And with um, so you'll experience less of these effects when you're using them topically and ingesting. It's more in an inhaled smoking form that you can really get most of your effects with these terpenes. Um, it's easier to get these effects with a bong, or um, they have this new device called a, a Puffco Peak, which is basically a an electric um, dab rig. You've heard of dabs, like the no. concentrated form of cannabis. No. Well, basically, they have con it's like really potent. Like it's like basically looks like gel. Kind of, but like looks like a wax. Um, that's so you know the tricone that's on the sticky stuff that's on. So they basically melt that off and that turns into a wax. And they heat that up. And if you heat that certain temperature, you can um, adjust it for certain terpenes because different terpenes evaporate at different temperatures. So if you're looking for specific terpenes, you can really fine tune with your bone. Right. Or right. yeah, there's that science again. Yeah, yeah. Like that. yeah. It's yeah. why it ain't the real thing because I'm like, <laughs> I just smoke it. I don't know. There, yeah, not everyone's on here. Yeah, yeah, nobody yeah. understands what you're saying. Yeah, so, <laughs> it's okay. Right. Right. The point is, she does. Right. The point is, she does. And I'm like, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Even me on that. For those who know, know. Those who don't know can find out. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Uh, Lisa, did you have anything? Um, you know, just I feel like the no, I don't. <laughs> I was gonna say something, but I was like, I think I already said that. Um, but you know, I grow with soil, so you know, always getting one with the earth is a really great way to um, get, get that lives. sensory, the dirt running through your hands, mixing up the soil and your um, getting clean get after the dirt. Hands. Right, the water reprocess, the refreshing, the cleaning, the, you know, yeah, you all do that, yeah. yeah. So doing that for yourself, doing that for your plants, doing it with your plants, it's all part of all the, the fields, yes. And that's why sex and cannabis, yes. They're indistinguishable, to be quite frank. Is a thing. In a lot of ways, in a lot of ways, they are. So I would like to thank you, ladies, for another great episode of Sex and Cannabis, where we have concluded our two-part series just on coming with cannabis. And like Stephen said, we can probably talk about this for hours and hours and hours. But I think we are leading to our last and final episode. When you're elevating your sexual experience with cannabis <laughs> by using edibles. That's going to be on our next episode. Yes. You guys can catch me, Grove Lisa, on all platforms, including the website, GroveLisa.com. That's the one W because I am your one and only favorite home grower. Yes, and I am Shay Jones, your resident certified sex coach. You can find me across social media at D O Y O U K A K Y at dot com. That is the website. Please feel free to like, subscribe, follow, uh, share, comment, and all of those great things. Thank you so much. And Sita. Yes, I'm Sita. You can find me at Sweets Elevated Eats on Instagram or Sita.abdurmalik at gmail.com. The spelling for both of those will be found in the information underneath the videos when you guys watch. So stay tuned. All right. See you soon.